So today I'm going to be taking a look at my first Doxa. It's a pretty interesting brand. I mean, this watch in particular, the Sub 200, doesn't look as Doxa-ish as most Doxas do. So let's take a look at it and get into the review. So we have a diameter of 42 millimeters, lug to lug of just under 46, height of just under 14, and a lug width of 19 millimeters. Some other general specifications for this watch we're going to have uh, they don't really state what movement, but I assume it's kind of like an ETA 2824 situation, running pretty well within around 10 seconds a day. Um, we have Super Luminova for everything that's loomed here. Uh, a domed sapphire crystal here, which is pretty heavily domed to be fair. It also claims it has an anti-reflective coating, but they don't state whether it's on the outside or the inside. Uh, so I have no idea. Uh, we also have this, I believe it's a sapphire bezel insert, which looks really nice. Again, they really don't stay on the website. Doxa needs to get their stuff together. And last but not least, I don't remember if I mentioned it, but 200 meters, uh, screw down crown, which is nice to see. And we also have it at a retail price of $990 on the beads of rice bracelet directly from Doxa, or I believe $950 on the uh, color matched rubber strap. So taking a look at the dial here, and I think it's really well executed. We have this kind of nice bright yellow dial with uh, a color matched accents in the black bezel here. We also have blacked out hands, which I think tie in nicely with the bezel and kind of how every marker and text is done in that black tone as well. Very simply speaking, we have regular baton markers everywhere with slightly longer markers at the 12, 6, and 9. Date window at 3, obviously outlined in black. And although it's not quite color matched to the dial, I think the white ties in with the fact that every other uh, numeral is, or not numeral, but marker is white. One thing I do want to state, and I really don't know how I feel about it, is the black hands have this slight yellow tone to the loom. And I don't know how well it's coming through in the camera, but the, the loom signature is much more yellow than the markers are. And I think that is to tie in with the fact that the dial is yellow, because I believe on the kind of aquamarine dial, they have kind of slightly aquamarine leaning loom in the hands. I don't know what the reasoning is behind that. I would prefer just all white everywhere, but I think as it stands, it's not too badly executed. So as we can see, they kept the text very minimal, just Doxa, the model number, and then Swiss made at the very bottom. We have a nice kind of seconds track along the outside done in a thin black print. And I do think maybe it would have been nicer to see Doxa and the print in the kind of like a bolder, more uh, just large text. But as it stands, I don't think it's too bad at all. It still looks nice, still is executed well. And I do really like how inky kind of the black pigment slash lacquer is for the central hand stack. Makes the watch, I think, more legible if it were just a plain silver on the yellow. And I appreciate that. So zooming in on the dial here, and I think you can tell it has this kind of nice yellow eggshell texture to it. The Doxa logo, or really every text that done, is done in black has this nice kind of crackly appearance to it, which I think is a nice touch, a little bit of a just gentle detail. Uh, the markers, they all have the loom applied really well. It's all packed in very nicely. There's no kind of loom missing anywhere. But I think you can notice on all the markers, there is a kind of dirtiness, like a kind of scratching or blemishing. Looking at the 12 o'clock here, we do have some kind of dust slash black marks on the kind of outside of the marker as well as inside on the loom. And I think right here, you can kind of tell how the loom in the hands a little yellower than the loom of the uh, markers. The hands themselves and the lacquer applied, I think is really well done. Has this nice, really glossy appearance no real blemishes that I can tell along them at all, which is really nice to see. Overall, pretty well done. There are just a few blemishes here and there. And then I think if I can move this hand out of the way, yeah, right there in the date window, there is a little kind of dot or particulate, which is unfortunate to see, but it is what it is. One thing to note is the print applied to the date wheel has a nice kind of puffiness and depth to it. It's not just a very simply cheaply printed date wheel. Uh, so good on good on Doxa. So in the end, a couple blemishes here and there, but I've never noticed them from kind of wrist view, and I still do think the dial looks great. So moving on to the case of this watch, and I think it's a pretty interesting just case. It has this kind of nice curve, somewhat liar, somewhat twisted lug here uh, that has this nice polished chamfer all along the outside. We have kind of concentric brushing along the inside tops of the lugs, uh, brushing uh, horizontally on the very side of the case. 
you have this pretty interesting mid case profile where it thins out really nicely towards the middle and kind of gets bigger and chunkier towards the lugs. I've never really seen a style like that and it is quite blocky. There isn't a lot of curvature, but I think because the lugs are somewhat short and the case is kind of proportioned the way it is, it still does wear pretty well on wrist. We see we have a signed Doxa logo on the crown with a little orange fish in there, pretty cute. The same fish buddy is featured on the case back with a kind of wave engraving into the back, which is cool to see. Uh, just some general text, water resistance, sapphire, all that good stuff. Again, looking at the case, I think it's pretty interesting. Not only do we have the bezel that's set slightly within the case itself, which is kind of unusual for dive watches. I think usually dive watches have the bezel overhanging the case, but the case is very much the widest along the midline and thins out a lot towards the lug ends coming to 19 millimeters at the lugs themselves. So it is a dive watch that wears unlike any other dive watch I've tried. It is a very small wearing 42 millimeter and that's pretty cool to see. Looking at the side here, we can see the bezel has this kind of, I guess, very flat Reese's cup shape to it where it's very small towards the center and kind of arches up and out towards the ends. Has a pretty nice knurling on it pretty easy to grasp overall has a really nice defined click to the bezel really good action and really not a lot of back play at all the only thing i would say is like the 12 and the 6 are really the only real comfortable spots to grab the bezel you can grab it along the outside and that's not bad either but you kind of come into this problem where you move the bezel and you kind of bump into the lugs because again, the bezel is set within the case rather than being overhanging. And I think that's the reason a lot of people overhang the bezel. Um, so it does kind of uh, lose little points on functionality, I guess. You can kind of grasp it a little higher and be able to keep turning. A little much to do that. And overall, I think the kind of usability of the bezel is slightly hindered. Looking at the bracelet, I think it's pretty nicely done. It's a beads of rice, so pretty much it's gonna be comfortable. One thing that's weird is it is 19 millimeters at the lugs and it kind of widens out to 20. Why they didn't just do 20 all the way through or 19 all the way through, I don't really know. It does have a kind of interesting look on wrist, especially because the uh, kind of uh, bracelet fits to the case so flatly and kind of recessed into the lugs themselves. So it does have a kind of interesting look on wrist, but we'll get to that in a bit. Going here, we have a nice flip lock deployant. I would like to see a push button, but it is what it is. A Doxa over here signed into the flip lock. Again, our little blubbed friend here. And overall, it's, it's pretty nicely done. We do have a couple of holes of micro adjust, which is always nice to see. It is a comfortable bracelet because it is a beads of rice, but there are some things, mainly the kind of <laughs> sizing that could have been improved. So moving on to how the watch wears, earlier I was wearing my Tudor Pelagos. And the main reason was this is a 42 millimeter watch and so is this, but I think in a second you'll be able to tell they have very different kind of visual wearing experiences. And there we have the Doxa on my six and a half inch wrist. And I think trying this watch on it really just doesn't look like a 42 millimeter watch. It has more the presence and the feel of a 40, to be quite honest. It, has again a very short lug to lug distance. The lugs themselves aren't very thick from what's showing because of that turn in. So it does a lot of these things to kind of trick the wearer, I guess, and trick just the eye into kind of wearing so well for its size. I mean, I again, I have a six and a half inch wrist. This can easily go down to six, maybe even five and a half inches and still look amazing. Um, so this is really a great size for this watch and if I would have just looked at the specs I would have probably discounted it just on the size. Looking at it from a side view again it, there's not a lot of curvature to that mid case but it does sit very well on wrist. Um, it is not uncomfortable there is no kind of digging or sharp corners it plants itself very well it wears very comfortably and I've never had any issues with just kind of the wearability of this watch looking at it from the side again it doesn't necessarily conform but just because the uh, case back does end up sitting into the wrist very well it does end up uh, sitting nice and flat on the wrist I think because it has a smaller lug to lug it wears well I think had this been a kind of larger lug to lug watch like let's say the Pelagos at 50 millimeters that flat mid case would have definitely been bad um, made it feel a little blocky maybe. I think on really small wrists, it might still have that feel. But as it stands, it is really comfortable. It does look nice. Again, that kind of slightly weird bracelet taper, which I guess when you're looking at it, you don't notice it immensely. 
but it's still there. It's still kind of weird. And again, because of this kind of, I would say, harsh integration of the bracelet into the lugs, it doesn't have a lot of slope. It doesn't have a lot of curvature. It doesn't have a lot of elegance. It kind of drops off very abruptly, leaves the kind of sharp edge of the bracelet there. Looks very apparent. I just wish that integration was a little better, kind of not as flat, a little bit more slanted and curved to just kind of uh, make the watch flow a little better. Now, although I didn't pay the, I think, two or $300 that the actual Doxa rubber strap is, I think there is a strap that fits even more perfectly. The Barton Elite Silicone with this nice yellow detailing. I think the yellows work really well together. I think it's a nice just hint. I think it works well with all the colors on the dial. And it's like $22 and not 200 So works better for me. There we have it on the Barton. I think it looks great. I like how the kind of yellow edging pops out from underneath the lugs, kind of just tying into the rest of the watch. Really sleek, really comfortable. Um, again, it's such a nicely planted, short wearing, really not 42 millimeter wearing watch um, that I think it just looks great on wrist. It, it is really a comfort to wear, it's a joy to wear. And I like the kind of just simple minimalist uh, design of it. Here we have the crown and buckle chevron. Uh, I believe this is in the Oxford, and no, Oxford is the blue one. This is the Harris or the Harris Tweed or whatever they call it. It's gonna be linked down, down below anyway. Uh, I think the grays pair really nicely with the yellow. I think it looks cool. Again, just cause it wears fairly well on the wrist for its size and its height. Uh, I think one piece straps are definitely doable on this watch. There we have it on wrist, comfortable overall, adds nice texture. Uh, and I dig it. And lastly, the Archer silicone strap, thankfully also in 19 millimeters. So looks great, pairs well with the white tones, really summery, really fun. And on a fun, already summery, already brightly, obnoxiously colored dive watch, why not make it even more so? And there we have it on wrist, really nice combo, really makes everything just pop a little bit more. And yeah, really dig this one. Uh, and just a really nicely wearing watch. I'm, again, I'm very surprised by how wear it well, how how well it wears. Um, and it's just it's just a cool one too. It's it's not a traditional case shape. It's not a traditional look. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a cool Doxa for sure. Looking at the loom, it isn't too badly applied. Um, at least on kind of like first impression, we can see the kind of hands and the markers are all loomed pretty nicely. And then we have some loom in the bezel surrounds. It's not showing up amazingly on camera, but both the hash marks in the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 are all loomed. It does die away pretty fast. It is not the best loom by any means. Relooming and comparing to the Timex, we can see the Timex is much brighter. Um, so really, Doxa could have done a lot better job on this loom, and as a dive watch company, you kind of expected they would. Touching on a couple points that I kind of missed in the initial review, uh, one thing that I stated was the kind of surrounds of the hour markers were black and although they do appear black, obviously they are actually stainless steel. Um, but what's really nice is the way Doxa has kind of implemented the kind of stainless steel accents, a lot of the times it does look like it's a black surround for the hour markers. So it does tie in really well with the black and yellow themes, but once you get it kind of off axis or in really bright sunlight, the stainless steel shininess comes out. And I just think that's a really nice attention to detail. I don't know whether that was completely a design choice of Doxa, if they really like controlled, quote unquote, the black point of the metal. But the way it's implemented here ends up making it look really, really nice. And then one other thing I forgot to mention, in the class we do have a diver's extension. It's a pretty lamely implemented. Uh, you're not really gonna ever be using a diver's extension, so it's here, but it uh, doesn't really add any points to the bracelet in my opinion. So pros and cons of this watch, and I think one of the biggest pros would just be the fact that it's so wearable. Uh, it claims to be 42 millimeters. I mean, it really is 42 millimeters, but it just wears so much better than you would expect. Again, I showed it next to my Pelagos and it wore miles more sleekly than that did. Uh, so it is a cool watch. It wears really well and it can work on a variety of wrist sizes, especially those with very small wrists, which is really nice to see uh, in a dive offering. One other big pro of, I think, Doxa just in general, but of course this sub 200 range, is the kind of variety of colors it comes in. It has a very nice, beautiful yellow for this color in particular. Um, they also have a nice kind of turquoise. They have a nice orange. So they do these kind of colors that, although Doxa has kind of always done it, are not very popular in the watch industry overall. And it's executed very well. I mean, the yellow is very tastefully done. It's not a gross yellow, which is nice. Lastly, I think, a big pro for this watch would be the pricing. 
Um, even on bracelet it comes in at just under a thousand dollars. Used market usually goes around the eight hundred to nine hundred dollar mark. So I think overall it's a pretty aggressively priced diver. You're getting that quote unquote like doxa clout. You're getting just a well-made watch overall that has a very very unique design that you won't see in kind of the what I would call kind of regular micro brand offerings. It's it's really unique and I do think it stacks up a lot against something like the um, Oris Aquis or some offerings from Zodiac or whatever really comes in around that thousand dollar price point. It's well priced and I think a great option to look at. Moving on to cons and there really aren't many with this watch. I think one of the major cons will just be the bracelet. Um, again, it does integrate kind of very harshly and abruptly into the actual case of the watch. I would have preferred a nicer slope to the kind of end link. And it also is 19 millimeter at the lugs, but 20 millimeters for the bracelet. It's a very weird decision on Dox's part. I don't really know why that was done. I don't know why they couldn't have just made it 20 and made it a complete 20 millimeter bracelet. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, for what the bracelet is, it's still comfortable, it's still well made, it still looks and functions nicely. But there are some little quality of life improvements I would like to see, like either adding ceramic ball bearings to make the flip lock a little more comfortable, um, adding a push button deployant, or making it 20 millimeters, or making it integrate into the case better. So there's small little things that can make this watch kind of go to the next level. And my last con with the watch is really the loom. Uh, I'm not big into loom. I don't really care if it's bright or not bright or lasts long or doesn't last long. I don't really use it ever. But for those of you, those of you who do like loom, uh, it's not great. It doesn't last very long. It's not very bright. And for a brand that kind of prides itself on like a dive watch centric heritage, uh, it's kind of a disappointment. They, can, they definitely could have done better for $1,000. And I mean, Seiko's at $200 look better. So loom and the bracelet are really two main areas they can improve upon but other than that the watch is pretty good final thoughts on the doxa and i think it's a pretty interesting one uh, it's nice to see dox as a brand adding a kind of budget uh, starter range to their collection i like that it's not as marmite as some of the other doxa models are this is definitely the most toned down doxa style that they do and I really like it because I'm not a fan of the other Doxa styles. I, I would never buy any of the other watches, but this one in particular, I do really like. I do think it looks nice. It looks classic. It can kind of be worn in most situations, and I like that about it. I think if you're looking for a fun diver with fun colors that's well built, that has a pretty interesting aesthetic overall, this is a great option to go with. There isn't that many that directly compete within this price point. And then you're either going to be looking at like micro brand offerings slightly lower price that kind of don't hit as much as this one does or more expensive watches that you're going to be paying two to three times the price for which maybe you still don't even want those ones so you're getting a pretty good value here with this doxa i think it's a great watch i think it looks great and i really enjoyed owning it so thank you for watching the review i uh, hope you got something out of it and i'll see you in another one